Egyptians 750 million years ago. A mile of ice at the equator, ice planet all round, therefore, at the surface, 300,000 parts per million of CO2. Will you tell me how that much CO2 could have been in the atmosphere and yet allowed that amount of ice at the equator? Well, I'm glad he's phrased this as a question, because it's a good question. It's a shame Moncton never tried to find the answer before hitting the stage and going to Congress with his own theories. If his debating opponent, Tim Lambert, will allow me, I'll be happy to answer it. The specific time Moncton's referring to is towards the end of what's colloquially known as Snowball Earth. The evidence of an Earth covered in ice is the discovery of glacial drop stones in rocks that were in the tropics over 700 million years ago. Given the weakness of the sun at the time, an ice planet is no surprise. Since this is our geological winter, the sun should have kept our planet permanently frozen, and the high albedo of ice would have kept it that way. The fact that it wasn't permanently frozen, a puzzle once called the faint sun paradox, is explained by the warming effect of greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide. But if carbon dioxide levels fell, or some other event overcame this greenhouse effect, it wouldn't have taken much to tip the world into an ice age. The expanding ice reflected more of the already weak solar irradiation, a positive feedback, leading to more cooling, more ice and more reflection, until nearly the entire planet was covered with ice. Lambert explains quite rightly that the albedo of this ice planet would have been extremely high. Nearly all the solar radiation falling on it, which wasn't very much anyway because of the weaker sun, would have been reflected. There's no way the sun could have melted all this ice. And even Moncton wouldn't suggest such a thing. But something did, because within a few million years the ice had not only disappeared, the Earth had turned into a hothouse. Geologists say the explanation is very simple. The only part of the Earth not covered by ice were warm spots caused by volcanoes. They weren't enough to melt the area around them, let alone an entire planet made of ice, but they did release gases when they erupted, including carbon dioxide. Under normal conditions, this carbon dioxide would have reacted with rocks and rainwater to form carbonate minerals, which get washed out to sea. But in snowball Earth conditions, there's no rain, no chemical weathering, and no disposal of this carbon dioxide. It just kept building up in the atmosphere over millions of years to higher and higher concentrations. Until eventually it reached a high enough concentration to overcome the weak sun and the high albedo of ice. So if you were to take a snapshot in time at the end of the last snowball, of course you'd find exceptionally high CO2 levels while glaciers were at the equator. But this is a dynamic process. It doesn't stand still like this. 